simulated process is basically it's a simulation of four color process. Instead of using four color process inks, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, we're going to be using the actual color of ink. So in this design, which will be using a simulated process design, we'll actually be using red, or we would use green, white, and gray to, in order to create the design. So now let's dive into Photoshop and show how to separate this stuff. Now this is a TIFF image on a black background. So to set this image up, we're first going to want to create a duplicate layer. That'll give us another working plate if we want to use a white underbase or anything like that. So we'll create a duplicate layer and that'll create two layers of the same thing. The next thing we're going to do is show you how to do gradient separations in Photoshop. Now this is more of an advanced image and we can also show a simpler image like this. This only has um, one or two colors. This one obviously has much more but the gradient separation in Photoshop is all done the same way. Now, If you try to use the gradient separation like you would do a spot color separation, it's going to be difficult. You'll come over to your magic wand tool, you'll click it, and then you'll try to separate some of the red out. And it will highlight some of it, but it won't grab the very fine detail if we zoom in by hitting Control plus. It's a hotkey. You'll notice that it's not getting this detail, and if we hit Control or Shift plus to try to grab it, it just highlights the whole thing. So it's really hard to color separate a gradient using basically impossible using the magic wand in Photoshop. So we're going to show you another way to do it. We'll right click and hit deselect and that'll give us back to where we started from. The first thing we want to do to this image is dictate if it needs a white underbase. With this particular image it will definitely need a white underbase because it has a black background and it's meant to go on a black shirt. So we'll go to our color range selection tool and then we'll click on the black part of the image. Now the one thing about choosing a white underbase is you don't want to invert it. You actually want to leave it selecting the black and pulling out the black so it just underbases that part of the image or where it needs to be printed over with color later. Then you can select how much you want. Now obviously if we have an underbase that is that overcoming like that we're going to actually be seeing white out of the edge of our image. We want to probably choke our underbase back a little bit because even there is fairly heavy and in the area right here where we have the, the flame, if we have that strong of a white underbase, you're going to be seeing white out of the image. Come back and we'll choke it back until we just see the white of where we need it. Select OK. Then we right click and save selection. What that does is we don't layer via cut or anything like that. We're actually saving the selection into a channel. So right click the selected area and choose save selection. Then under channel you say new channel and we'll call this white underbase. If we see our channels over here, we see now that would be our white underbase and if, if we added this to the rest of the image it will affect it as a white underbase. So we've created our white underbase, now we've got to go back to the drawing board. So we deselect that, we reselect the RGB of the image, and we right click it, deselect the image, and that clears everything out. Next thing we'll do is we'll color separate the red out of the image. Go to select color range and then click on the red. Now remember once we're selecting the red, we want to choose the invert and we only want to select the red out of the image. Now black has some red in it, so it's picking that up because we have way too much fuzziness or stroke on the image. So we're going to pull it back until we only see the red areas of the image. And that's something you're just going to have to get used to and learn and know how it coordinates with your press and your end result if you're going to be using the color selection tool to separate your own artwork in Photoshop. We right click, save selection, say red. So now over here we have our white underbase and then we have our red. There's our red right there. Now once again we're working in channels so we don't have to worry about converting to black or overprinting or anything like that as far as doing a color overlay because it's already converted into a channel. Deselect that, hide the rest of the image, see the red right there, 
and you go basically go through color by color. So you go through your gray, you go through your orange, you go through your green, and you go through a white highlight again to do if you wanted to do a highlight, which would be a final print of white. This takes a lot of playing with and a lot of learning in order to do correctly because you never know how much color value you're actually grabbing. You never know if this is too much of a white underbase or not enough of a white underbase. So you do, especially in a more complicated image like this, you do have to do a lot of playing, a lot of testing with it in order to get a result that would fit your, yours or your customer's needs. Now a simpler image like this, this eagle right here, this could be a lot easier to color separate. Um, if we go into selection, go into color range, and let's say we just wanted to take the orange out of it, just choose how much orange we actually want to take out. There we go. And then save selection. So a simple one or two gradient image, much, much easier to color separate. All right, there we have the orange gradient. And then we go to the rest of the image and we would select RGB, deselect by right clicking, and then select the color range, select the yellow in the image. Now we'll go and select the yellow in the image, color range. Choose how much yellow we want to blend into the orange. Save selection. And then finally, there's a the yellow right there. You would come back and select the red. So now we have orange, red, and yellow. All separated. And if we had a black background here, our new channel, then we could then see how this would, image would look similar to on a press, but you're really not going to see how it looks until it actually gets on the press. Once again, you do have to play around with it. How much do you, you know, need to blend these two colors together in order to get your results? But if you're separating gradients and photoshops, that is how you do it under the select and the color range menu. Hopefully I haven't scared you that much because this does take a lot of experience in order to know how much to do that. And that's why most printers go with a color separation program. That you don't have to play around with all these settings in order to know that your stuff is going to look good when it gets onto the press.